Clydewood shows up on Google Maps. Both. I call it Clyde because I live on Clyde. Great. You see, we're, we're on Clyde here, which gets bisected by the uh, basically a quarry in the 417. And I think Clyde continues on the other side of the 417, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. 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 Um, so what you basically have here is a uh, limestone habitat. Uh, not much wet habitat. I think there's a few kind of, you know, small uh, puddles in the spring, and maybe uh, a little bit of habitat that persists. Maybe a bit of a uh, uh, frog and salamander habitat. But really what you've got here is mostly upland to maybe music. So uh, kind of, you know, middle dry-ish, not so dry to like really, really dry. We were here a week ago, um, myself and a few other people, just doing kind of a preview tour. And was it ever hot and dry? So um, I heard some people uh, were just telling me just before we started that uh, I guess certain people who are just, you know, they're a little bit aware of this site but don't maybe go into off and just, ah, it's scrubland and it's kind of, you know, kind of worthless, whatever. That's kind of interesting to hear just because um, I would call, I would rebut that with Alvar as, as it may be. You've got kind of porous limestone upland, uh, which is very, uh, kind of, considered to be very endangered habitat in general, right? Um, lots of quarrying activity. In fact, I often look for new habitats to explore for um, limestone plants, anyway based on Google Satellite with just looking for the quarries. Because uh, the, the best um, limestone has historically been quarried to some degree. And if you, you know, you maybe you've been here before, maybe not, but if you drive along the highway, the 417, you can see there's a giant quarry off to the south as you pass by here, right? It's just huge uh, dig out area. Um, quarrying is interesting because, yeah, it kind of shows you where to kind of look for limestone plants, but uh, it is kind of a destructive, uh, uh, process, right? So certainly plants can move back into quarries once they're abandoned, but uh, you're, you're not as high anymore and so on. So really, I, I consider it a sort of a, at least a mildly destructive, if not more, uh, process, which sort of shows you where you should look for certain kinds of plants anyway. Um, so the flora here is really, really good from a limestone perspective. So of course, you know, you, if you very, if you want to be very simplistic, you've basically got two kinds of plants in our, uh, our area, and kind of worldwide actually. Uh, for uh, on the land. So you've got limestone, high pH liking pl plants, and you've got acidic loving, low pH loving plants. I would say the high pH plants are kind of underappreciated and kind of less uh, considered generally, meaning our farmland is generally in high pH, less rocky soils. And uh, habitat is frequently very, very fragmented, often just sort of push off the landscape altogether. So when, in the modern era, 20, 2019, we're, we're looking at kind of where to preserve land today, because habitat pressures are bad everywhere, right? So we might look at the Canadian Shield, or kind of, you know, areas that are uh, less arable, perhaps, and say, well, we've got kind of good connected habitat there and so on. Let's kind of focus on that and the species that are there and so on for bioblitzes and, and that sort of thing. And often, uh, not exclusively, but often that's kind of low pH, kind of acidic type plants. Um, and the ones that uh, prefer the sort of farmland and the rocky kind of quarry land are often, they're really, really so fragmented and getting kind of scarce, they're often kind of even just missed by a lot of the naturalists, actually. 